Hey, Keith, Metro Police, come over here. It was an arrest nearly three decades in the making. New developments in the unsolved murder of Tupac. That shook the world of hip-hop and beyond. Police arresting Dwayne Davis, known as Keefe D. Authorities calling him the only living suspect for a murder Americans have been obsessed with for years. So what they got you for, man? Biggest case in uh, world Vegas history. According to investigators, Keefe D's quiet life on this unassuming Nevada street masked the criminal past of a hardened gangster responsible for the murder of one of the most influential rappers of our time, Tupac Shakur. What does it mean to this city to be able to finally bring forth an indictment? Well, in one word, justice. Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Where's the gun? Where's the Cadillac? Where is there any evidence that put Keefe Davis here? Tonight, an ABC News investigation pulling back the curtains, taking you inside the probe that investigators say solved one of the most infamous cold cases in modern history. If all these people were living the day, they'd all be arrested and charged with murder. The dueling police departments that may have complicated the investigation. I just don't believe a lot of the information that was being conducted there in L.A. was actually being shared with us. There would be no indictment had we not did what we did then. And the never-before-heard audio of Keefe D. What happened when you pulled up alongside? That's true. A mastermind plotting things out, that's not Keefe D. You can't get away with murder when you come to Las Vegas. Back in 1996, Tupac was at the prime of his career when the 25-year-old Death Row Records artist was shot near the Strip. I like to think I'm a revolutionary to bring change. He had changed the rap game with hits like California Love. Say what you say, but give me that ball beat from Drake. Let me serenade the streets of LA. And breaking through in films like Juice. Check yourself, Q. You gotta snap some collars and let them know you had to take them out anytime you feel like it. Becoming a bona fide mainstream celebrity. This is a superstar about to take a mega star turn. That level of star power snuffed out too soon. It was definitely a big case to me as a kid growing up here. Lieutenant Jason Johansson was handed the reins to the Homicide Division at the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department in 2021. Why had the case gone cold? We knew what occurred and who did it. What we didn't have was a way to prove it in a court of law. ABC News has learned that police actually interviewed Keefe in 2009, 14 years before his arrest. We've obtained exclusive audio of what they're calling a confession, which took place in California, where Keefe lived at the time. How do you feel about Tupac being dead now? I wish it never happened, man. Right. Swear my life that f***ing murder says. Keefe D had long been on law enforcement's radar. So we're in Compton, California. It's the hometown of Keefe D. And it's not that big, it's about 10 square miles. But the gang ties here run deep, depending on where in the city you actually come from. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, the city of Compton had become almost synonymous with the street gangs California is infamous for. You mainly had the blood, and then you had Crips. It was then that a young man by the name of Dwayne, Keefe D. Davis, was making a name for himself as a major player with the Crips. Dwayne Davis, by all accounts, was a well-established shot caller within the Southside Compton Crips. He had worked his way up through the gang, through narcotics trafficking and various other criminal activities. Keefe D grew up with notorious figures in hip hop, like Marion Suge Knight, the Death Row Records co-founder, who was with Tupac when he was shot. And then what'd you see? Blood. Do you see people with the guns? Listen carefully. Blood. But in the 90s, Keefe and Suge found themselves on opposite sides of the raging battle between West Coast rappers and their adversaries from the East Coast. On one side, Suge's Death Row Records, which police say had connections with the Bloods. On the other, Bad Boy Records, which authorities say often hired Keefe D's Crips as security. It was run by CEO Sean Combs, who's used nicknames Puff Daddy and Diddy, and was home to artists like Notorious B.I.G. of Big Papa fame. Dwayne Davis was the one who was organizing with Bad Boy Records to offer them protection. ABC News reached out to Diddy and did not hear back. When Keefe sits down with Vegas police in 2009, 
He tells his version of events from the night Tupac was fatally shot. It was September 7, 1996. It seems as though the entire world had come to Vegas to watch the much-awaited boxing match at the MGM Grand between Mike Tyson and Bruce Seldon. Tupac and Shook were in town. So were Keefe and his crew, who he says drove to town in that infamous white Cadillac. Where do you stay? I stay uh, with my girl. After the boxing match, Tupac, Shug, and their crew walk through the MGM Grand Hotel lobby. There, they encounter Orlando Baby Lane Anderson, Keefe's nephew. Tupac and his entourage are caught on hotel surveillance video attacking Orlando after Tupac allegedly learns that Orlando might have tried to steal a prized death row pendant months earlier. When he went over there and punched Orlando Anderson, Tupac Shakur basically forced himself into gang politics. What did um, Baby Lane tell you? That they jumped on him. Who? Uh, they were all shooting him. They beat his arm or something. According to prosecutors, that incident is what gave Keefe and his soldiers what he called the ultimate green light. After that fight, Tupac and his entourage head to Club 662, a nightclub Shug ran by the Strip. And we had the light on Las Vegas and Flamingo, and he, Shug, uh, Tupac hanging out the window, and all the girls were going crazy on the corner. What happened when you pulled up alongside? Shoot. Who who got shoot? Lando, Lando, so give me your eyes shoot. Okay. So shoot. How many how many times did uh, Orlando fire? Approximately. Maybe about five or six. I see the bullet like going shoot head. I see the boy jump up and down. I try to get in the back seat. The boy being two bucks. Keefe also telling authorities he was the one who provided the murder weapon. You give the gun to somebody? Yeah, uh, I gave it to the cat. Like, I don't know who I specifically had it to. Six days after he was shot, Tupac Kamara Shakur succumbed to his wounds. He was only 25. These are the players from the night of the 7th. Yeah, these are the players. This is Orlando Anderson, and he's in the right rear seat. And then Keefe D in the right front passenger seat. And without question in your mind, based on your investigation, Keefe D. Davis is the mastermind. None of them would have made a decision to do something with Keefe D. in the car mm -hmm. unless Keefe D. was part of that decision making. And what's the status of all these other gentlemen? Uh, they are all deceased. Davis is the only member still living. Orlando Anderson had always denied his involvement in Tupac's murder. He died in an unrelated gang shootout in 1998. But Keefe D's words alone, allegedly telling the police he provided the murder weapon to another, weren't enough to make an arrest at that point. We had no corroboration, no other cooperation of any other individuals. Dwayne Davis walks in and says, I lied. We have nothing to backstop that. The key on this case was being able to backstop it. Coming up, the rival police department also talking to Keefe D. A combination of arrogance and ignorance would prove to be his undoing. Plus the man who all sides say could make a difference in the case. What do you think about Suge Knight? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.